theory that is a remote base channel, and there are other simplex channels technically. But they'll be carrying VHF radio equipment with them, making contact with amateurs all over the Monterey Bay area on VHF radio. In addition, they're going to be carrying what's called APRS. This transmits their altitude and their geographic position down to the ground, tracking it on a GPRS receiver, so we know right where they are and how high they are. In addition, they're going to be wearing one of these, which will measure their saturation blood oxygen level and also their pulse rate. So we know if they get in trouble, we know immediately that they're in trouble. Uh, we've done about three or four of these shoots. This is the Biomed readout over here. If I put this on my finger, after a few minutes, I don't know if you can get a close up. After yeah, I got a, few a close up. After a few minutes. Ability to operate your skydiving equipment. Okay, so. we've got a clear cutaway handle and a clear ripcord handle. Can you see anything that could come up and obscure access to any of this? And I think I can deal with this. I, mean, I can still cut away. You're good, you're done. Okay. Everything checks unless you see something that we didn't have on our list. Hi, this is Mark Meltzer, jumper one. Call signs AF6IM. I've been jumping since 1968. I've been a ham for two years and figured this would be a good way to combine two hobbies. And out of that idea was born Parachute Mobile. I'm jumping with Michael, jumper two, KF6WRW. Yeah, that's fine. Make sure you hold on while I make it clear. Leave it more comfortable for everybody else. Make sure the radio's turned on. You got all these people and everybody back at Radio Fest. Yeah, they're all on. <laughs> We're all looking for action and adventure. <laughs>
Chapter 1, Mission Control, advise when you want more calls. Uh, South. Bravo, Bravo. Yeah. Alpha Bravo 6, Sierra Oscar. So, Mark, tell us, what was it all about? How was the jump? Hey, Michael. Well, we were, you know, you know, you get a little punchy up there at 18,000 without oxygen, but exit was fine, beautiful view. I uh, tossed my pilot chute at about 16,000 feet. It was fully open. It, it took a long time to open. I guess it wasn't terminal velocity. Mm -hmm. I was open at about 15,000. Got uh, a lot of QSOs. Uh, it was a little chilly up there. But at about 7,000 feet, I wasn't going to make the drops on the winds. The loft were really high, so I had to unstow my brakes and, and get some drive. The extra airspeed put a lot of wind noise into my microphone. Okay. But uh, So yeah. you have partial brakes while you're making radio contests to keep the airspeed down? That's correct. Okay. So non -sky, can you describe that to non-skydivers in the square parachute? Sure. Um, a square parachute uh, has a way that you can pull on control lines to deflect the right or left uh, rear surface of the parachute. If you pull them together, it's uh, equivalent to flaps on an airplane. They deploy symmetrically and give you more lift and less speed. When I uh, deployed, I left the brakes stowed, so I was, uh, it, you open in basically a uh, braked condition, and uh, that gave me a fairly slow airspeed. But I noticed I wasn't going to make the drop zone. The winds aloft were pretty high and I needed more drive, so I had to unstow my brakes and go into a full speed flight. That put a lot more wind across my microphone and people had a hard time reading me below about 7,000 feet. But it all worked out, uh, on, landed on the, on the uh, landing zone, stand up landing. And uh, it just feels so good to have everybody out here helping out. It's a great feeling so, to have so a team us, on the ground. Was, uh, what was the fidelity like receiving stations? Receiving was phenomenal. Uh, just absolutely perfect, beautiful, full quieting. Um, no trouble at all. So even with, uh, even though you had like a slower airspeed under canopy, but you could still hear good audio. Yeah, I have this little secret service earpiece here. Okay, and so, uh, it was crystal clear, no problem at all. Even in the airplane, and you from your skydiving experience know how loud King Airs are. I could uh, hear people just fine, no problem at all. Okay. So that was the in terms of going back to the radio. Uh, was that fairly order? It was. It didn't sound chaos to you up there, did it? No. Thanks to mission control and a bunch of courteous uh, ham operators, it was very ordered. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, phenomenally good. They even left space so that I could get wind updates from. Uh, Rob on the ground, the attack ops uh, okay. guy. So what about the rest of the skydivers? What do they think about all this? Well, they kind of don't know what to think of it. You know, first, they, I've had some people come up to me and say, are you a student? They think this is some sort of fancy radio gear so that I can get instructions from someone on the ground. And I've been jumping for 41 years, so I'm, well, you're always a student. I mean, you're always learning, but a lot of the jumpers have no idea what it is. They look at it and they're kind of afraid to ask you what it is. They kind of Let me tell you, so let's say if, if 41 years ago, did you attempt to do this stuff with a uh, with what a para commander and uh, you know, big bulky handheld or what? Well, I've only been a ham for two years. I've been a skydiver since okay. 1968. So I in 68, it could have even been tube gear. You know? I see. But yes, I did my time under para commanders and even under uh, military surplus C9 jet ejection canopies, which were brutal, brutal okay. landings under those. So what was it like to jump a square parachute? You know, a square parachute lets a 60-year-old guy still jump. You can get it properly flown. You can get a tiptoe landing every single time. You can't do that under the old round canopies. And if I had to jump those round canopies, I would have hung it up 10 years ago. So in terms of free falls, like you got free fall formations, unlike I guess 40 years ago when they did RW, I guess back then it was a, it was more rough. It was, it was very rough. And it was also a very big deal to be in a formation of more than 10 people, which is ho-hum now. I remember when I got my uh, SCR patch, which you get for being in a formation, I think, of 10 or more in free fall. Uh, that was a huge deal back then. Now it's it's so laughable, nobody even wears the patches. If you're a hundred ways, I do that all the time. Yeah, in fact, there's a guy here, Mike Eakin, who was on the plane with me, who was uh, part of the 400-way uh, formation okay. done in Thailand. All right. So, uh, why don't you just sign up, give us your name and call sign. Okay, I'm Mark Meltzer, I'm a skydiving addict, I'm in a one-step program, one step out the door. My call sign is AF6IM. <laughs>